Hi, how's it going? And welcome to Lippy Presents Ghost News Network. Today is our question of the week. So, Will, what do you have for us? The question of the week this week is going to be what evidence do you need for something to cross the line from paranormal to normal? Oh, so it's the other way around. What kind of evidence do I need to cross from paranormal? Back to normal. So to make a paranormal normal? Not necessarily back to normal, but for something to be considered normal rather than paranormal. I mean, all right. Well, there was a case we had a while back where it was a, it was a family, mother, father, son, and um, they contacted us and they said the, the child was screaming, wouldn't sleep in his bedroom, you know, I thought there was monsters in there, you know, nightmares and all this stuff, every night. <clears throat> we came in, we investigated. He had, did an EMF sweep, quiet. Carbon monoxide was good. Um, really didn't find much. And then in the middle of the investigation, one of my teammates calls me up to some bedroom and like, you gotta check this out. All right. Go up there and they take a compass. They're holding it over his bed and the needle's spinning. So I'm like, alright. Grab the digital EMF. Give me a reading. See what it says. Maxed out 199.9. Okay. Look at the kid's bed. It's got drawers underneath it. <clears throat> Open up one of the drawers. There's a bunch of toys in there. You pull out this Star Wars lightsaber. Bam. Nailed it. Giving off 199. So, finish the investigation. <clears throat> Tell the client, hey, this is what we found so far. Remove that, see what happens. We're going to go home, do the analysis, come back two weeks, do the reveal, and see what happens. We didn't find anything. We didn't get anything at all. Nothing on video, nothing on audio, camera, nothing. Go back to the reveal. <clears throat> we asked how the son has been doing. And ever since they moved that toy to one of the kids' bed, completely normal. Been sleeping in there every night. That's a case where they thought it was paranormal, and it turned out to be normal. Yeah, I did a case in Massachusetts many years ago. Uh, it was actually a day investigation on a rare occurrence, and it was at a daycare center. And these kids would be sleeping, and they would all have, like, nightmares at the same time and have a whole bunch of issues and freaking out, just very similar to what you were saying. And when we were investigating, uh, we come to find out that there was uh, issues with the EMF in the building. And the EMF was actually the Romex cable was tied to exposed copper wiring for their water lines. So the EMF, as everybody knows, water and copper, it's conductive to electricity. So all that EMF was shooting through the whole building and it was even to a point where we turned the EMF on, we would turn the water on in the faucet and the EMF would jump all the way up. That's why, for those of you that do walkthroughs on the house, that's why it says water running or not running, because that's where we found out about that. And uh, it was the same thing. They got an electrician in there. They had the wires all cinched up and fixed properly and everything covered the way it should be and then everything went back to normal. But yeah, I mean, that was something where we thought it was paranormal and turned out to just be, you know, electrical issues. Yeah, one of our old cases, um, Kings Park Potter's Field. Years ago, we used to record, we used to use audio cassette back then. And we used to record, I don't know why, on fast mode. The theory was if you record on fast mode, you get a voice coming over that's talking regular. How is that possible? So we were there one night, and we had the audio cassette going, and when we did the analysis. We picked up a voice that said "life," regular, <clears throat> not fast mode. Like when, you, when we did the analysis, we listened to it like it was fast mode. Like you could hear the chipmunks. Hmm. You could hear all of us talking. We couldn't tell what the hell we were saying because it was so fast. But we had a voice that regularly came on that just said "life." right in Kings Park Potter's Field. Many years we thought that was like amazing evidence. <clears throat> and then a couple of years later I decided I wanted to just play the audio at normal pace. I wanted to know what the hell we were talking about. So I'm playing at normal pace, playing it, playing it, and when it came to that point, somebody like cleared their throat. And by them clearing their throat in fast mode, that's the way it came out. Sound like somebody said life, but it really wasn't. So we took our evidence and we had to <clears throat> redo the field report of it and 
go back. But we had um, yeah. another example: Sheep Pasture Park. Oh. We go out yeah. there and we're investigating, and we start hearing <laughs> static in the middle of a field, and we couldn't oh, pinpoint yeah, yeah. where it was. We just you just hear the and it would just disappear. Yeah. And we're like, what the hell is that? So one night we go, it was loud. One night we go, and it was just me, Mike. I think you were there, Trevor. Brandon was there, and we were like, tonight's the night. We're fucking finding out what this is. We've got to find out what this is. We bought like a, a, a and pot and a, and a wooden spoon. Yep. Because sound travels so crazy over We were there. trying to like see yeah. how the sound travels to see where it could come from. We were able to follow it all the way back. We walked a while through the woods, through things that weren't even pathways. We come to the end of the thing, and across the street, is some kind of factory USDA and or something yeah like that. and every so often they have pneumatic lines in there and everyone every once in a while it would release itself from the cold and it would just go and all of a sudden that was it it was debunked and it sounded we'd been there what three four times and we were like why is there like a phantom static it doesn't work like that and we couldn't figure it out and lo and behold we went in there and we were able to debunk it and that was what a year later yeah, we timed it out. It was like every 23 minutes, this thing would go off. Yeah. And, um, and it has to be the right temperature. It has to be colder out. If it was warm out, you wouldn't you hear wouldn't it. You wouldn't hear it, yeah. So that was pretty yeah. cool. So but that's I mean, another one. Yeah. Those are examples. Mm -hmm. So that's what it would take to figure out if it's normal. <laughs> if, if you're talking in like a theoretical context, though, like... What would it take to convince me that something that we previously considered paranormal phenomenon could be accepted as normal phenomenon? The way I already look at things, everything that occurs in the universe is obeying the rules of the universe. So just because we don't understand the rules, like eventually as we like illuminate understanding, it will become normal phenomenon. So for me, it would just be rules. I need to be able to do something 100% of the time, repeatedly, no all other variables accounted for. So it's like if, if the EMF detector is only going to work when a ghost interacts with it, I need to be able to find a way to replicate that 100% of the time, and then I'll be like, all right, there's something to this. But until I can eliminate all the other variables, and there's still some, like, I'm not sure how this works, like I can't write this out on a piece of paper for somebody, mm -hmm. then that, I, that's, that's what it would take for me. Mm -hmm. See, I would posit if you can write it down on a piece of paper, then yeah, it's, it's, it can't be a ghost. Right, but if yeah. if ghosts are real, right. then they obey the laws of our universe, which would make them normal right. and not paranormal. Right. It would make them natural, not supernatural. It's the same thing. It's the same I mean, thing with we'll cryptozoology. Out, you talk like about like the colossal squid. Everybody thought that it was a cryptid for the longest mm -hmm. time, and you know, lo and behold, what a few years ago, they finally they finally discovered that right. this giant squid, yeah, yeah. this colossal squid, and it went from cryptozoology. Mm -hmm. just zoology. That's, right, a perfect, exactly. that's a perfect example. So like with that, it was finding the physical being and saying, look, here it is. Here's a body. Here's yep. the actual being. This crosses the plane from paranormal mm -hmm. to normal. Yeah. Here it is. This is no longer paranormal. Yeah. I that's, mean, I, I got one for, for instance, like you talk about that's, that's on our, on our earth, you know, like right. you talk about aliens. Say if we actually capture one, is it still considered like in the paranormal realm? No. But or is it normal? Is it normal, normal to me is it, it's not really normal to Earth though. <laughs> right. Because it's not Earth bound. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's you know, when we talk about the giant squid, that's on Earth. That's right. something that's here. But say if we capture something that's from outer space, from another galaxy, you whatever you want to call it, is that considered normal or there, paranormal? There are, I mean there are plenty of things that we know occur, we just don't know how they occur in science. Right. right. So it's considered normal, we know it's there, we know it exists. By having that body we'd say, Yeah, we know it's real now. We just don't understand how it works. So like, and we kind of fall so into what that. What would you consider like well, the wisp orbs coming out of like that is that paranormal? Is that normal? That's considered I normal. Consider that normal. It's a natural it, it, phenomenon. Oh, oh, yeah. It's a natural phenomenon, right? See, but phenomenon implies that it's not normal. Phenomenon is no. something out of the norm. I don't think so. I think, like, when something's phenomenal, it's not normal. No, but it's really no, but it's really freaking cool. <laughs> I get where you're going with that, but no, will will it a wisp is just it's balls of gas. It's natural. It's it's nothing that's. That's paranormal, you and know. Um, it, it's 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 proven, you know. Like mm -hmm. even orbs, orbs are not paranormal. They're proven to exist. We just don't know 
where that energy source is coming from. Mm -hmm. They they exist. That, the only thing that changes it is that <clears throat> you can take an orb that we know is scientifically proven, and then posit that okay, well now that there's extra EMF, is there some is there extra energy around? Is there something that can absorb that energy in order to help itself manifest? Right. So the question so, with orbs is 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 it spiritual? Right. Does that have that spiritual base to it? That right. that's where that's coming from. And, uh, and thanks so, Hollywood for all your weird looking ghosts. Nobody knows that. So yeah. That kind of answers the alien question too. So right now we consider aliens paranormal because we don't know for sure they exist. If we captured one and had it, it's mm -hmm. not paranormal anymore because mm -hmm. now it's 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 real. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes. I mean, normal. it may be considered it, abnormal because it's not it's, a common it's, occurrence. Right. It's but definitely it's, abnormal. It's, but, it's but, but, but it would be paranormal. It's not paranormal. Now we know it's real. Right. That's <laughs> it's crazy. Though. I like it. I like that. It's Anybody else? Question. You want a mind fucker? <laughs> 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 <We're good. laughs> All right. All right. So thank you guys very much for joining us on this latest edition of Question of the Week. What did you think of this question? Let us know in the comments below. Is there a question that you would like to see us answer on this show? Let us know in the comments. If we get a comment of you guys asking us a question, we will bring it up on one of our meetings and we'll make that our question of the week. Uh, we'll credit whoever asks the question. This way you can be a little bit more a part of the show. So thank you guys for joining us. And if you haven't yet, please click that like, comment, and subscribe. And also, if you haven't, click the little bell in the corner to get notified of when we upload our videos. So thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, take care, guys.